We're live. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. Today we're going to be making Bucatini Amatriciana. Um, it is a pasta dish that is from Amatrice in Italy. It is not from Rome, but a lot of people think of this dish and they think it is a Roman pasta dish. But before we get started, for anyone that's new here, my name is Skylar Bouchard. I am a chef, a food blogger, a TV host, and I my purpose is basically to make the kitchen more inviting, less intimidating, and to just have a good time. So I hope you guys are down for that, and we're going to have a pasta party today. Um, before I get started, I do want to make note that this is a very traditional dish. It dates back to thousands of years, um, and the one ingredient that it calls for most chefs don't have or most tutorials I've seen they don't incorporate that one ingredient is called guanciale and that is basically a cut from the pork the pig's cheek um, and it adds such an intense nutty fatty flavor I was in Rome and I enjoyed this dish bucatini a matriciana for the first time and I was I was blown away because it just looks like a traditional red sauce so, that being said, a lot of us don't have access to guanciale in the U.S. I understand that is not authentic. Authentic. Um, so, we're using some pancetta today, but I was lucky. I found really coarsely chopped pancetta at the store, cured pancetta, which is very difficult to find here in the U.S., especially during this pandemic. And one more note that I want to add is that you know obviously this is a very traditional dish but and i'm not from italy i am not an italian cuisine expert i did travel to italy and enjoy this dish and i understand the flavors i love the flavors i've done a lot of research on this particular dish and um you know onions and garlic are not traditional but i really enjoy onions and garlic so today i'm going to add my spin to Bucatini Amatriciana. I just wanted to make sure that disclaimer was out there. I'm not claiming that this is 100% authentic. I am claiming that this is Skylar's version of Bucatini Amatriciana. And I've read so many renditions in cookbooks that are meant to teach Italian cooking and they both, they all use garlic or onion or both, which is, you know, surprising considering it's not actually the traditional way from history, but who knows, maybe it is. Okay. I'm rambling. Um, I hope we can all respect the tradition and respect the innovation as we move forward. All right, so the first step here, um, we're going to start with our sauce. Now, the real thing we want to do is render all the fat off of this pancetta. Um, that's the key here. We want to cook in it. We want it to get really glossy and, and create a nice flavor in our sauce. However, I do want to add a little bit of moisture to my pan, so I'm going to add some olive oil. Um, I would say about two teaspoons, no, ballpark two teaspoons. And that's just to get the oil going. Also, I'm not sure how much fat this is going to give us. Um, I'm not sure, you know, what we're going to get out of it. So this is just playing it safe. It's going to be plenty. It's going to be perfect, I promise. So I'm just going to wait for this to heat up a little bit. Um, I also want to talk about the pasta. I'm using a bucatini. So for anyone who is not familiar with bucatini, it's basically a wider spaghetti, but in the middle, it's a very hollow noodle. So the purpose is that it basically absorbs some of that sauce. So when you're eating it, you get sauce on the outside and sauce on the inside, which is always a great time can't think of a better time. It's like a long, skinny, 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 skinny rigatoni. Think about rigatoni, how the sauce gets inside. That's what bucatini does. But it's better because it's all like smooshed in there. All right, our oil is hot, so let's put our pancetta in. And we're also gonna put our onion in as well. You can wait for the pancetta to cook off some of that fat before you put the onion in. But we're live today and it really, in my opinion, doesn't make a huge difference. So I'm going to add about half a cup of diced, finely chopped onion. Now, you can do coarsely chopped. You can do slices. 
I just prefer when the onion is small and it gets really soft and kind of just melds to or molds to the tomato sauce and becomes one with it, like tender, mm, beautiful, beautiful flavor. Oh, my microphone. That's my microphone right there. So I hope you can hear me. Also, I do have the stream up. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Let me pull it up. Can I pull it up? Where is it? Oh my god, yum. This smells so good. Uh, right now I'm also on about medium heat. So let's just let this kind of cook off the fat. I'm so happy we found the coarsely chopped pancetta because the one I used with the carbonara was so tiny. It was like quarter of an inch, not even cubes, which is devastating. Um, so yes, I have the chat up if you have any questions. It is in the, the corner. It doesn't matter where it is. Just ask me your question. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you also really don't need to add salt to your pancetta because it's salty. It's cured. So this already has a lot of salt. If you do want to add salt towards the end, we can do that. Um, behind me, I have some water. I did bring it to like a pre-boil so it won't take super long. I added a lot of salt. I added like four tablespoons of salt. You're not going to eat all that salt. I'm sure you've heard this before if you're into food, but heavily salting the water helps that pasta absorb some salt, some salt, like a smidgen of salt. So the ooh, so that it's it has flavor because salt actually brings out the natural flavors in any ingredient, whether it's sweets, I love salt in my sweets, or whether it's savory. Whoop. I'm scared I'm gonna like spill this all over the place trying to do like little, little, little jabs. Okay, I'm gonna bump the heat up a little bit. This pancetta is like kind of looking light pink, which I'm not into. And it doesn't have as much fat as I thought. I knew this was going to happen. I'm glad I added that olive oil. Um, one of the recipes I read actually called for butter. I really imagine that would kind of cook off. But hey, if you want to use butter and olive oil, go for it. Someone left a comment. Thank you so much for watching, Ernie. I appreciate you and I love you always. You guys are the best. All of you are. All right, this is looking really good. I'm gonna add one clove of garlic. I did not use garlic when I tested this last night, and I'm adding it at the end of the fat rendering process because when garlic burns, it sucks. It ruins everything. So I just wanna make sure that it is, you know, just adding it to nice aroma and flavor instead of being in there for too long. Because once we add our tomatoes, it's gonna all chill out and simmer for a minute. So I'm waiting to do my pasta for when this is simmering because all that flavor is gonna to come together. Okay. Mm -hmm. So another thing about this recipe is that um, it does have some heat to it. My husband and I were not really into heat. I know that's horrible considering my job is to cook, but um, it is what it is. A lot of people add uh, dried crushed red pepper flakes. I've heard the tradition is to add pepperoncini, which mm, I love. If I could find those, if I had those, I would add those. But it's really up to you. You are in your home right now. You're not cooking for a crowd. Just cook for whoever you want, but it's your rules. It's your kitchen. That's why I love home cooking. I imagine, I would be upset if I went to a restaurant and they didn't make it the traditional way if that's what they were advertising. But for home cooking, I really think you can add your spin to things, whatever you like, um, whatever makes you happy. So I'm just going to keep tossing this. Now it's really glossy, really fatty. I want you, can you see that? I mean, it doesn't even matter. I don't know. So I'm getting some nice brown bits on the bottom of the pan. I'm going to scoop that up with my spoon because those brown bits are the natural sugars, that caramelization coming off, and that creates flavor. Yes, it does. Ooh, it's going to be so tasty. All right. So if this is where you're adding pepper flakes. This is your time to shine. Give 
beautiful stir. All that fat is just beautiful. So I'm not going to add them. Please don't kill me. Just know that if I did add them, it would be right now. Yeah. All right, let's add some San Marzano tomatoes. They're a very juicy, ripe, sweet tomato from Italy. You, I do recommend using these. Like, don't use anything else. You don't have to use whole San Marzano. Oh, this is going to be so good. It's getting really crispy on the bottom. But I do recommend just any kind of San Marzano. Even if you can only find a puree, that's better than using, like, really crappy tomatoes. So these are whole tomatoes but in the can. There's a little bit of puree, and like, I definitely want to get a mix of it. Um, and when I was in Italy, I posted the dish on my Instagram story. I would say that's about two cups of whole San Marzano tomatoes. And I'm just going to kind of break them up with my spoon. Whoa, you see all that come out? I'm going to break them up with my wooden spoon here. I'm also turning the heat up a little bit because there's some watery parts in that can. But, yep, I'm going to break this up with my spoon far away because this is bursting out tomato juice, which, hello, that's a great sign for a tomato. It means it's really juicy. We love that. So, yeah, but I want parts of the tomato in here. Um, you can just use cherry tomatoes in here with some tomato puree. Once again, cook however you see fit. My temperature is about medium high. This one's not very ripe. That's a real shame. It's kind of yellow. I'm going to let this just kind of simmer in here and then I'm going to take it out because I want the bright red tomatoes that are soft, not the hard one. I'm sad they put that in there. And I think the brand, in case you're curious, SMT, San Marzano Tomato, would make sense, you know? You know how it is? Yay! Goodness gracious. All right, so I'm just kind of breaking this up. Still gonna do it. These tomatoes are pretty big if you're curious for size, like that's what we're going with. So getting a whole tomato in a bite of pasta is probably a little aggressive. So I think, you know, a half or a quarter here is perfect. And I do, I personally want this mixture to bubble Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. When I made this last night, I used crushed San Marzano tomatoes and it came out really well. So that's also a wonderful option. Okay. So this is gonna simmer. I, I was kind of conflicted about doing this live because it does need some simmering time to get those flavors to come together. But we can make our pasta. We can also talk about this dish and the flavor and, and how it comes together. Also, Italy in general. If you have any questions about Italy, I'm in love with Italy and I, I want to go back. I was in Rome for a few days and that was definitely not enough. Not enough at all. I feel like even a year wouldn't be enough in Rome. Just it's such a beautiful place. All right, I'm going to stop touching this. I'm going to bump the heat up a little bit. Still a little too watery for me. By the end of this, I want a nice sauce that is thick. It's going to stick to my pasta, and the pasta water will help with that as well. But the, the can here definitely had too much water for my liking, so I'm going to reduce it a little bit and make it thicker. I love, love that. Um, my water is boiling. I'm just going to wait. But if you don't have bucatini, it's not the end of the world. You can use spaghetti. You can use linguine, you can use whatever the hell you want into your life, do whatever you want. But tradition says bucatini, but we're already breaking tradition considering that uh, we're using pancetta and what I use was not guanciale. Guanciale is the tradition. All right. Tomato paste can also help bring a really sweet, rich flavor to it, but it's not the tradition. And we're here to try our hardest. Alrighty, so this is just going. My package says the cooking time for this is seven minutes. It's not a lot of time, and I'm actually gonna cook it for two minutes less than my package says. 
it ends up being al dente and when it's in the pasta sauce it's going to residually cook so that way when it's all done it is perfect and it's not going to be a sad floppy noodle hate to say sad floppy noodle but we're here to be honest sad floppy noodles they're definitely not happy all right this is definitely getting a better consistency. I'm just going to continue to break these tomatoes up a little bit. Give it a little stir. Um, some recipes I've seen say to cover the skillet while you let it simmer. And you're supposed to let it simmer for like 20 minutes. But I told you I'm reducing this water a little bit. I don't like how watery it is. It's very upsetting in my opinion. Now I'm going to bump the heat down. And let's cover it for the cook time of the pasta. I'm in love with this pan. This is from Great Jones. It's called the Deep Cut, and it is so great for pasta. So great. Um, okay, so the total, this is really funny. It says there are eight servings in this uh, pack for bucatini, and my husband and I ate a whole pack yesterday. But today we are going to do what this says. And I will use half of this because I feel like four servings is appropriate for two people, right? It's like everyone always ends up getting seconds anyway, so, you know, whatever. All right, while we wait for this to simmer a little bit, let's talk about cheese. Um, the traditional, I mean, I don't even know what tradition is anymore because I've seen both of these used, but I'm pretty sure pecorino is the traditional cheese that you want to incorporate into this. You only use a little bit, it just adds some nice saltiness, a little bit of tang. It's really rich, but it's also airy and light at the same time. If you've never had Pecorino Romano, you must try it. Um, but I've also seen some recipes incorporate Parmesan, which is a little sweeter, nuttier, salty. It's got that umami effect to it. I, just like I did with my carbonara, which is not traditional, I used both. I'm using both today because I have both and I love both. Um, but. Use Pecorino Romano if you have to pick one of them. Similar to Carbonara, you're supposed to only use Pecorino. Let me get a mix. Okay. Chili flakes I never used. Bobby! She's simmering and she's beautiful. I'm gonna taste it. Just make sure the flavor profiles are Kind of what we want before I move forward. Woo! Okay. This is the tasting spoon, so I won't dip this back in. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh my. It is a savory tomato sauce. That's what this is. I just, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, I think we're ready to add our pasta. Where did I put the pasta? Oh, that's right here. Silly me. We're gonna add our pasta. Like I said, I'm not gonna go crazy like yesterday. Let's go for half of this, four servings. I'll put exact measurements in the description box below. You'd be surprised. These blow up. They're big boys. We, we thought the whole package made sense, but this is what they end up being. This is uh, our leftovers from yesterday. They're really thick. Mmm, so tasty. Love it. The longer you let this simmer, the more exciting it will be. Just as anything. When the flavors come together at a low heat, it's like they just seep into the sauce and become one. When you serve a sauce too early, it's like, it, it just, it tastes like four different ingredients. But if you let a sauce simmer, it becomes its own being. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I'll just pretend it makes sense. All right, in the meantime, I'm gonna kind of like tidy up a little bit. Oh, it's a shame, I just touched the Let's get some tongs or a pasta spoon. I just want to use tongs, it's just easier. Make sure the pasta does not heat up on the side of the pan. You want it fully submerged. We're going to wait 
five minutes. So I'm going to have a little timer set here. Five minutes starting now. Tick tock goes the clock. Ooh, my dog's going to go crazy. He is over there with my husband. And uh, when he hears me just get excited, it's game over. Honestly, the pinchette that I used, I'm not really as into it as I thought I would be. It just like, I kind of like the smaller bit more and it's because, I don't know, it kind of looks like ham. It shouldn't. And I was cooking it at a really high heat, so. You can also use bacon with this recipe. Um, Cured meats are preferred, just like with carbonara. It is up to you. All right. Just kind of crushing those tomatoes up, except for that one sad, unripe tomato. Rip off. I wonder why. I hate the way that pancetta looks. I don't like it. It's like pale. I'm gonna taste it. It's just my husband and I eating, so whatever. But if you're making this for friends, people who don't know you very well, don't use the same spoon, obviously. Mmm. I mean, tastes amazing. So that's all that matters. Tastes great. That is the most important part. Beautiful. So this is cooking down a little bit, simmering. I shouldn't be stirring it that much. Let's put the, the thing back on, the lid. What am I saying? The thing. Crazy, crazy. Let's check our timer. Do a little Instagram story. Oh man, how do I do this? Oh, that's not gonna work. Just doesn't work out the way we want it to when it's so smoky like that. And I'm just going to uh, drink some water. I'm gonna get these plates ready for plating. Oh my God, I got tomato juice all over my computer. So, just some like really shallow bowls. Also, plates are perfect. And, I mean, last night my husband was like, I really want to put some basil on here. Just don't do that. That's not the way it's served. It's not the way you're supposed to do it. Just always like to clean my bowls an extra time before I put something in there. Just a little wipe down. This is smelling so good. So the flavor profile here is kind of nutty, um, salty, savory tomato sauce. Um, you're not getting that really intense sweetness. A little bit, of course, your tomatoes are sweet and juicy, but it's really a savory tomato sauce dish. And what really stands out and makes this how it is, is that pork fat. I know I mentioned this before, but the taste would be so different with the guanciale. Um, but we didn't have that, so, you know. I did hear that a lot of Italian markets do carry it. So if you happen to have an Italian market near you that is open, go for it. Or even local butchers may have it as well. Oh, yes, this is coming together beautifully oh yum this is like the perfect consistency it's thick it's got that tomato presence but you can also see a little bit of that glossiness from the fat how's our pasta doing let's see what are we on we are on 15 seconds yes so, 
I'm going to get myself ready for this next step. And what is this next step, you ask? Great, I'm so glad you asked. Well, this next step is to quickly transfer the pasta to our sauce. So stop the timer. I hope it actually stopped. Did it stop? It stopped. Sometimes it doesn't stop, you know? Um, where's my mix? I need a mix. Here she is. Love her. All right, so I'm gonna take this pasta. If it cooked according to the instructions, then it's al dente. And so I've got a pasta spoon. I've got my tongs, and I'm gonna keep the pasta water by my side. You can also just reserve it if you find it annoying. I'm gonna put it directly into whoops, into my sauce. Use this. this has teeth to grab some of the noodles and I'm using my tongs to flip it around. I'm not flipping it yet and tossing it because I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why. I personally, and this is like not a traditional thing uh, for this dish, but I really love, this, this is the pepperoni. So I love tossing it as I sprinkle the cheese. So I'm gonna add a little bit, Let's keep adding it. And out again, because this is going to stick to the noodle. And then the sauce is going to stick to the pasta. And by the way, when you're transferring it, it does bring some pasta water on its own. So that's why I really, I'm not really into pouring in pasta water until I know I really need it, if I need it. I don't know if I need it. Really quick. This is like taking up my space. There we go. Feels great. Um, and now I'm going to just add a little Parmesan as well. But remember, Parmesan, I don't think it's uh, traditional at all. So this is like a Skylar spin, and I love it. So, in my opinion, the tomatoes I used are really watery. I'm still getting watery bits here. So I'm gonna just turn my heat up and kind of, wait a sec. Um, I've never done the whole like flip your pasta like this. Oh yes I have, I did this with carbonara, but I'm too scared, I'm too scared right now. On live, it's like such a pressure. Let's eat this. Here she is. Beautiful noodle. I will tell you, the flavor is really good. Okay, nice. I can see it's starting to stick to the pasta a little more. I think my sauce needs a little more time. We are live, so it's an expedited process. Your sauce should be sticking to your noodle. That's really the way it is. This is not a super saucy pasta. It's a, it's a sticky tomato sauce. Your noodles should be basically just carrying the tomato. And I'm being really delicate, by the way. We do not want to break our noodles. That's also devastating. Now, call me crazy. Call me the worst person ever, but I'm adding a little more pecorino here. I'm sorry to all the people who I've offended during this time. But I like it because it really helps that pasta stick and also it adds to like a really nice creamy essence. Not in a creamy pasta kind of way, but it just kind of makes this tomato sauce a little more decadent. When I was in Italy, I was looking at the photo and the, the Amatriciana was like orange, like a bright orange. I find to be very cool. And now it's starting to look just like it. And remember, we're being so careful. We don't want to break the pasta. So I need to look at you and remind you, you can't 
break the pasta. And here's that like one lousy tomato that was not ripe. I don't like it. So I'm gonna just put it over there. I want only the ripest, most beautiful tomatoes. So I'm basically just sauteing, sauteing, you know, cooking the pasta in the sauce for a few minutes until it's done. And you're gonna know it's done. That sauce is gonna stick right to the pasta. You're not gonna have any more watery bits. And if your pasta is too thick, or I mean your sauce is too thick, add some of that pasta water. I'm too scared. I'm too scared to do this. <laughs> I'm like, I keep going back and forth. Like, should I do it? I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't do it. Should I do it? Oh, this is just perfect. I Once again, I'm not crazy about the kind of meat that I'm using, but it really reminds me of the dish I had in Italy. Wait, I need you to look at it. I mean, you really can't. <laughs> it looks just like it. I'll post this on um i don't know where this is live so i don't know if i can go back and edit it but i'll post it somewhere on my instagram and you can see because it's really amazing it looks so much like it the sauce has just changed in color and that's i think from that little bit of cheese it's like this bright red orange and it's all sticking to the pasta like the pasta and the sauce i'm making a big old mess but the pasta and the sauce have become one it's the marriage of the pasta and the sauce. So now I'm going to remove this from the heat. I think I tossed this for like five minutes. I don't know. I'll go back and watch it. And then I'll put the whole method also written out in the, uh, the description box. Because whenever I cook something live, sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to go back and change that. And it's just more helpful. But I can test it multiple times and then let you know. But I will say this looks freaking cool. almost just fell on my butt because <laughs> it's slippery and I don't know why. So I'm going to put this over here. Let's plate it up. I just unplugged. Woo! You guys, <laughs> that's one of my umbrella lights just fell right in. Fell right in. I'm going to move it. That's so crazy. These things suck. We made it. We made it to the end. <laughs> um, okay. Little, little towel. This just looks so sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So let's plate her up. I am going to plate rustic style. I'm just going to use one of these. <gasps> this is perfect. Honestly, I'm going to plate this and then I'm going to put it back in the skillet to recreate the Italian style. Now, this is not the traditional plating. I'm not claiming to be an expert in plating Italian pasta. I like a rustic bowl of noodle. And it even has the large tomato chunks. Oh, I love it. It's just like what I had in Italy. It makes me so happy. Oh, because I, this didn't turn out the way I wanted, I'm going to get a little twirl. There's always a way to fix it. Let's see. Let's see. You can also just make like little twirls around the plate and create like little twirls everywhere. Honestly, that actually looks pretty artsy. <laughs> Let's just dab it with a little of this. This is not normal. This is like usually you just like plate it and eat it, or you're very meticulous with it, but. And then top with a little more pecorino. Optional, of course, but you know. You know how I am. And that is Bucatini Amatriciana. Oh, it's so exposed. I'll hold it like this. Very cute. Love it. Let's try it. We have to try it. That's always the rule here. What I notice is this sauce, just like in Italy, it's sticking to the noodle beautifully. This is not a saucy, what is that swirling? I have to try that again. Um, this is not like a Sunday sauce, tomato sauce. This is a sticky, light, fatty tomato sauce. This is just devastating. The bucatini is very al dente. Mmm.
That's perfect. It is absolutely perfect. I love it. Absolutely love it. It's just so tasty. I know I'm twirling it wrong. Just like let me live. Mmm. Mm. Well, I'm so into this. Okay, I need to like stop eating live. It's kind of rude. I'm like here to entertain you all and I'm just snacking. But like, holy bajuju. Mm-hmm. So tasty. Mmm. I'm very impressed. Not into the meat as much as I thought, but you know what? The purpose of the meat here is really the fat. We need that fatty meat. And pancetta is the next best thing. And it's really what we have to use if we can't find guanciale. And that's okay. Woo. But this really isn't a traditional bucatini amatriciana. It's an Americanized version. And I'm okay with that if you're okay with that. Um, I still love it. But it will never have that same flavor that the dish in Italy had. Because that all comes from the guanciale. But... What is cool is that you can make this at home and have a dish that's very similar, so tasty, and really easy to make. I mean, it's, it's one of the most savory but also light tomato sauce dishes I've ever had, and I really love it, and I love bucatini. You gotta have bucatini. If you have bucatini in the house, you gotta make this and get to a pepe, which you can find the tutorial also on my page. Thank you guys for watching. Um, for anyone who's new here, you can follow me on Instagram at Dining with Skylar. A lot of my recipes are on withskylar.com, but this recipe will be in the description box just because this is more of a tutorial. It's not really a recipe. It's just kind of like a how-to. So I hope you enjoyed it and have a lovely rest of your day. Bye. Ooh.